the shorter side. <laughs> you take the bigger side. You too, I do want you to link up. Step forward. Step forward. Just close your eyes. I'm just asking for ridiculous confirmation. Ridiculous. That you know that you know. And that you both know that you know. And that it's ridiculously stupidly confirmed. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Can you wheedle your way up here? You're good. He's like, I don't want to get slammed on. You're good. Nice and easy. You said this is your first time ever doing this. There, you don't have to do anything. It's really just about resting, relaxing, and receiving and letting God have his way with you. That's it. Go ahead and close your eyes. I'm going to ask the Lord to give me a word for you. I feel like the Lord has just brought you through a season of wilderness and a season of dry, season of desert, desert, dry land, a place where you have struggled in feeling uh, fruitful, a season of healing. And I'm reminded that biblically, every place where there's a season of healing is always followed up with a season of rebuilding and restoration. And that's good news for you because I sense that the Lord is going to begin to shift you into a place of rebuilding. And if you were to break your arm in a particular place and they were to do x-rays years later, they would see actually that that bone heals itself and it becomes actually stronger than it was before. And I hear God saying, in the places you have been in the most broken, the places that have been the driest in your life, those are going to be the places that become the most fruitful. And so God, I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Lord, for her faith. And just standing here and being willing, God, to let you minister to her. And hear the Father just say, remind her that I love her. As simple of a message that it is. But I haven't said it to anybody else tonight. But God wants you to know tonight, he sees you and he loves you. And though man has rejected you, and though man has walked away from you, God says, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. That even while you were in your mother's womb, I was with you. I knit you together, and I formed you perfectly. And even that I had a plan for you, and I had a purpose for you. And so, Father, I thank you for Kimmy. And I pray, Holy Spirit, even right now, that you would fill her up, God, from the top of her head all the way down to the tips of her toes. There it is. I will open the floor now. If anybody wants ministry, you can come forward. It's very unusual, actually, for me to call on people. But the Lord said tonight, quick work, and sometimes I get tired of standing here, so I'm like, let's go. Okay. You good? Yeah. Got a little, little wopsy-wopsy there. Well, I didn't want to call this one. <laughs> I just need to take a lot of Okay, let's go. Sure. Quick and easy. Yeah. So everything you've been asking for, everything you've been asking for, Everything you've been confident in, that you know that God has shown you, I pray for an increase of confidence, a tenacity and a per perseverance, the spirit of a pit bull that would hold on to a rope, and the more it's tugged away, the more he would tug on that. I just loose that spirit in you right now. I ask the Holy Spirit to just confirm words that he's spoken to you that would give you the energy and the unction, the tenacity to hold on and say, I knew it, I knew it, and I rebuke the enemy from trying to steal. I rebuke him in your life. I stand as your sister in Christ, and I war with you, and I rebuke the enemy trying to discourage you and trying to steal your hope. And so, Father, we just, to the same degree that you have opened up our eyes to see, to the same degree that you have given our wisdom to know, we ask for a double portion of that right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Ministry. 
Ivan, are you feeling any heat in your foot? Are you feeling anything in your foot? It's hot? Good. How many of you believe his foot is being healed? Look at... Even if you didn't believe, the faith in the room would cause it to happen. Because four friends dropped a man, and it was the faith of the four friends that healed the man. And look at all the friends you got in this room. So we stand in agreement that your foot is being healed. Just keep letting it work. Keep declaring it. It's hot up here. And she's like, whew. It's thick up here. It's thick up here. Nice and easy. Thank you, Lord. So you were here when I gave the word, and the word was out of Hosea chapter 9, where, or Amos chapter 9, where it talks about how the, the plowman will overtake the sower, and how there are seasons when things begin to happen so fast that it makes your head spin. That the one gathering the fruit catches up to the one planting the seed. It's almost like there's a, a blip in time from springtime to fall. And the Lord wanted me to speak that to you because you weren't here to hear it, but it's important that you know that this is the season that you're in. That things are going to begin to happen so fast that you're going to be like, I can't keep up. And the Lord's like, yeah, that's okay. I don't need you. I don't need you to keep up. Just hold on to me. Just keep up with me and I'll keep you up to where I'm taking you and what I'm doing in your life. So I'm asking for more healing. Counselor the client, I'm asking for softness, tenderness, the courage to be tender, the courage, the courage of the kingdom, the courage of the kingdom to just receive. Yeah, there it is. See, it was interesting that I wanted to call you up and the Lord said, no, she needs to want it. She needs to go get it, right? And so now here you are, and you're like, I, I want it, everything. Yeah, there it is. This way, let's do it this way, baby. Nice and easy. Really, I'm not doing very much. I'm not working very hard tonight. Yeah, we're just letting the Lord do it. Uh, thank you, Father. You'll notice I'm not working very hard, which is really how it should be, right? If you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, Jesus said, if you have the faith the size of a mountain, then you can say, not you can cry out to me and have me do it for you, but you can say to this mountain, be moved and it shall be moved. That's the authority of the kingdom that God has given to us. It's the authority that God has given to us. He handed it over to us in the, in the Garden of Eden when he said, stand on the earth, have dominion, produce the fruit, subdue all things under your feet. And that was restored through the blood of Jesus. So there are things in our lives that we've been begging and asking God to move in our lives. And God is saying, why are you asking me to move it? Speak to it and tell it to move. That's what he said to Moses when he came to the Red Sea and he was crying out and saying, come on, you're going to have to do something. There's mountains on my right, mountains on my left, the enemy on my heels, the sea in front of me. And God said, why are you crying out to me? I have put the rod of authority in your hand. Raise the staff and part the waters. Raise the staff and part the waters. Everybody just open up your hands for me right now. So, Father, we just, we just ask even right now, God, that whatever that mountain is for each one of us, God, that you would give us that visual, that we would see that mountain. And you can do it out loud. I, I say do it out loud. But I want you to begin to speak to that thing, even in your mind and the spirit. And I want you to allow, you see, see we, the, the imagination is the Holy Spirit's playground. Okay, it can be the devil's playground, but when you surrender it to the Holy Spirit, it's the tablet of the Lord. And he gets to write upon it. So now we're giving permission for the Holy Spirit to begin to write on the tablets of our imagination and begin to show us that thing moving. Begin to show us that thing moving. Begin to show us that thing moving. Can I minister to you? Begin to, yes, you. Begin to show it that thing moving. Come on, that thing that you think is too big for you, the thing that the experts have told you is going to overtake you, but God is saying tonight that we are big enough, you are strong enough, and we have the authority of the kingdom. Come on right here, baby. Come on right here, baby. I want you to picture that mountain, that thing that you think is just too big for you, the thing that's overtaking you. 
Come on, God immediately just showed you to me and said, there's a thing, there's a thing in your life that feels like it's overtaking you, it's consuming you. And so God, we just minister the wholeness and the healing, the wholeness and the healing, the purity of the kingdom. I speak to sickness and affliction, and I tell it to go right now in Jesus' name. I tell it to go. Come on, you, you got to be worthy. you got to know that you're worthy to be healed. you got to know that you're worthy to be healed. Come on, I feel that wrestling in your spirit. I'm standing too close that I can't feel it. I am worthy to be healed. You're worthy to be healed. How many of you believe she's worthy to be healed? All right. So I just want you to rest and relax, and I want you to receive the love of the kingdom because it's his love that heals us. And it's our inability to receive his love. This is not about you loving him. You will never love him enough. That's not what it's about. It's just about believing that he loved you first. That's all it is. It's that simple. That's it. That's it. I don't know why I fight that so <laughs> The enemy knows it's the bullseye. But tonight we're warring with you. We're warring for you. For the love of the kingdom to cleanse and purify, cleanse and purify every fiber of this physical body. We curse affliction to the root. We curse affliction to the root. We cut it off. I break genetics off of you. Genetic dispositions have no place in the kingdom. The only genetic disposition in this physical body is the blood of Jesus Christ. We declare the DNA of Jesus Christ is flowing through your body right now and is beginning to rewrite things that doctors have told you. I'm shifting your mind even right now. We speak to cancer. We speak to disease. We speak to addiction. I take authority of it all tonight that you will be healed so fast your head is going to spin because that's what God said was going to happen tonight. I'm not making up something to pray over you. I'm just, stand, I'm, just, I'm just standing on what God has said. And so, God, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. We receive it. And I want you to just allow his, his love. His power is just his love. That's it. When, when we're being overtaken, we're being consumed, whether we're standing, whether we're sitting, whether we're shaking, whether we're laughing, it's just His love. It's like waves. It just overtakes us, right? And so it's about coming into alignment with that love and saying, I receive your love. So go ahead and close your eyes and just stay in that space. Just stay in that space. And just let Him love you. Just let Him love you. Here you go. Just hear the Father say, I love you. There it is. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Healer, Lord. I, I don't know how cancer could be in this room. Not in the Holy of Holies. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. So we declare healing and wholeness. The doctors are going to be astounded, and you're going to tell them it was Jesus that healed you. You're going to know that it was Jesus that healed you. You're going to know that it was Jesus that healed you. And they're going to say, how did it happen? You said, oh, I just finally realized how loved I am and that I'm worthy of life. That's all. I just realized that I still have a lot of life to live, and God still has a plan for me. He still has a path for me, and God loves me too much to be done with me. So I rebuke all those lies in your life in Jesus' name. God's not done with you. In fact, I hear the Father say he's just getting started. Now, you've just put your toe in the water, but God has a, a tidal wave for you, baby. He's got a tidal wave for you. He's got a tidal wave for you. He's got a tidal wave for you. Come on, give him that tidal wave. Get in that tidal wave. He's got a tidal wave for you. He's got a tidal wave for you. Thank you, Father. How you doing? Oh, because you, you're just like swaying over there. Hi ho. Can I give you a hug? I haven't seen you in forever. Talk to you in forever. It's good to see you. I'm glad you came tonight. It's nice and easy. When we stopped talking, I, I saw like a, a raw iron, it sounds weird, but it came right up between your legs and just kind of straightened things up. And I just felt like this, that the Lord was like, tonight I want to straighten some things back up. I want to bring this confidence into you that isn't because you've necessarily figured things out or because your circumstances are amazing, but a confidence in you that really is just because you're established in Christ. A knowing in your knower that you know that you know that you know that you're a child of God. 
And in that, and in that alone, you stand in your confidence and you will not be shaken and you will not be rattled. If I were to take an iron rod and I were to just penetrate it through your body, it doesn't matter the wind, the tornadoes, the storm, you would not be moved. And that iron rod is the Holy Spirit in you. And so I'm asking God to do that, that he would remind you that your establishment is not in anything or any per person around you, but it is in your God. You are his child and he is your God. And so, Father, I thank you tonight, Lord, for a firm foundation, an establishment that cannot be shaken, cannot be rattled, cannot be moved, cannot be swayed, that is stubborn. Spiritual stubbornness. A spiritual stubbornness and a confidence from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Look at her. She's got her eyes shut. How are you feeling? Better. Healed? <laughs> of course. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> good answer. That's the Holy Spirit. That's how much God loves you. I have never met you before, but that's how much God loves you. You're welcome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Nice and easy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Have I met you before? Okay. Thank you, Lord. I just see a real mothering spirit in you. I mean, I see lots of, of I want to see children, but I feel like it's almost more like teenagers, youth, college kids, just kind of around you, really coming to you, and they find you safe. And it may not necessarily be in the form of a ministry, but a lot of times our presence in and of itself is ministry. And the Lord says your presence is a ministry to young people, to people who are doubting, people who have been shaken in their faith. But there are people who will come to you, and it's not that you necessarily doctrinally or theologically give them answers. It's just that your presence gives them an assuredness and a safety. And so, Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you for the confidence that you've given to her in your love for her. I thank you, Father, for the things you've changed in her, the things that you've shifted in her. I thank you, Father, that tonight, God, it is your desire to connect with her even deeper. And, God, that places that are still yet unhealed, we're calling forth a quick work tonight. We're calling forth God, a quick healing in your heart, in your past in your childhood, all the way from the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb until today, all things being healed, all things being healed, because God says he's got a work for you to do, and so tonight you're going to begin to shift from looking towards your past to looking towards your future, and things are beginning to transition for you, so Father, I thank you for your love that is poured out upon my sister, and I pray God, even tonight, that you would remind her of your love, and your glory, and your grace, and your mercy, and your power that you have for her. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's give her more, Lord. That's just the spirit coming on you even heavier. Give her more, Lord. Yeah, just release that. Release that. That's just all the healing that you've been holding on to. From all the way back to your childhood. Go deep, Lord. All at once. All at once. You don't need to go to a therapist for the next 12 weeks. You can just get it all tonight. Get it all taken care of. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We just remove every chain from your past, every label that's been spoken over you. We break it off of you. We take authority over rejection. People who have told you that you're abandoned and that you have no mother or father, that you've been orphaned, I take authority over that message in your life. And I declare that tonight you're coming under the authority and you're coming under the headship, the fathership, the mothership of God your Father. Keep doing it, Lord. Keep healing it, Lord. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Keep letting him heal. Keep letting him heal. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give him more. Now I'm calling forth just a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit. A fresh fire of the Holy Spirit. The courage of the kingdom. The roar of the kingdom. The boldness of the kingdom. The words of the kingdom. 
his words in your mouth coming out of you, spilling out of you with confidence. Every person that has told you to shut your mouth, God is rewriting that. He's opening up your mouth to speak for him. I break fear off of you. Take authority over anxiety. Yeah. Go ahead and close your eyes nice and easy. She's got your back. Don't worry about it. So, Father, I thank you for my sister in Christ. God, I thank you, Lord, for the sweet spirit that you've given to her. I thank you, Father, that you've put into her the fighting spirit, the spirit of a warrior. And I thank you, Father, that you're drawing her into that warrior spirit more and more into prayer and intercession. And I just see the Lord really just giving you a heart and an understanding for the power of prayer. And even as Rachel was saying, that when he puts things right here, that that's an invitation to enter into the Holy of Holies and to begin to war for things. Things that you are miles away from, things that you are seasons away from, things that are in the past, things that are in the future. But stepping into the Spirit, God gives you the power to be able to move into spaces and places, times and seasons. That's the power of an intercessor. An intercessor. And so I thank you, Lord, for the gentle, quiet spirit that you've given to her. And then when she's in her closet, she turns into a warrior. And I feel like the Lord is saying to tell you that it's working. That he hears your voice, and when you begin to pray and you begin to war, it rattles things in the spirit. And there have been times when you thought, this isn't working. God can't hear me. I'm too small. My voice is too soft. And the Lord is saying, uh-uh. No, no, no. I hear you. There's a verse in the Bible that says, when we speak, the Lord inclines his ear to our lips. And I got that visual. That the Lord is like, oh, she's talking, shh, and hushes all over the kingdom so that he can lean in and he can hear the whispers of your heart. But I sense the Lord is going to begin to give you intercession opportunities through things you know not of. He's going to begin to show you people in the spirit. They're going to be like, I have no idea who that is. You're going to be like, who is that, Lord? He's going to be like, it doesn't matter. And he's going to be able to impress upon your heart the things in the direction you should be praying in. And God is going to remind you even then of this moment when I said to you that your voice rattles the heavens. You're very small in the natural, but the Lord says you're very big in the spirit. You're very big in the spirit. So, Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Lord, for this intercessory gift. And I pray, God, that you would just give her the confidence and the boldness to know, to know that she knows. You hear her voice, and that when she prays, things move. I thank you, Lord, and I pray this over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. Amber, Amber. Oh, you're going to. Are you right here? You first. You're going to be separate, but I want you to just, you're good. Just stand right there. I just don't know how, how this is going to work out. Okay. Sometimes he goes back and forth. And, okay. Nice and easy. Pretend like she's not here. Pretend like I'm not here. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, won't he do it? <laughs> So, Father, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge your work. We acknowledge that you are a God who answers prayer. We acknowledge, God, that there is nothing too big for you. There is no hole too deep that your arm is not too short for. And so, Father, we acknowledge, God, that, that deep things, dark things, God, you are redoing right now. We acknowledge, God, that pits that are so deep, your arm is, has reached and has pulled out. That dark spaces have been turned and have been illuminated into light. And that things are tipping into the kingdom's favor. Come on, I just want you to feel and sense that tipping. That tipping into the kingdom. Yeah, there it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Lord, that she is truly what you would call a friend. A friend of a friend. I feel like the Lord has said he is giving you the gift of friendship. Not that you have friends, but that you have a deep understanding of what it means to be a friend. You've walked with some, some people through hard, difficult times. And when people have given up on themselves, you didn't give up on them. And the Lord honors that tonight. I feel like the Lord said, look, I have three close to me, and in my deepest hour of need, even they fell asleep on me. But you've never fallen asleep on your friends. You've been faithful, you've been tried, and you've been true. 
And so I ask the Lord to just honor you tonight and that he would pour back into you with the same energy and the same love that you've poured out, that he would pour into you the friendship of the kingdom. There it is. Oh, gosh. I'm laughing because I can feel it coming up my body. I got room for one here. I got room for one here. Does anybody, I mean, come, come. Come and get it while it's hot. Heidi Ho. I'll have you stay here. I'll have you over here. Come this way a little bit. I promise they'll catch you. And not catch you. Yeah, yeah, we all know why she can't catch you. Yes. Does everybody in this room know why you're not catching? Does everybody in this room? Oh, because I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, you guys, Kyla's not catching because she's pregnant. Woo! Which, by the way, which, by the way, which, by the way, is a miracle. Yes. She's always been told she couldn't have babies. Yep. So people keep going, like, why isn't, I, most people, like, know Kyler catches, and everybody's like, why isn't she catching? 12 weeks pregnant, having a baby November 4th. Come on. All right, go ahead and close your eyes. Ooh. I just feel the Lord is just taking you into a new season. A new season that's going to require a lot of, I'm going to say risk. I want to say faith, but I feel like the Lord said risk. But the Lord's going to call you like Peter. But here's the thing about Peter is he, when we read that story, Peter actually says to Jesus, command me to come to you and I will come. He actually predetermines the encounter. He predetermines the fact that he's going to walk on water. And that's the kind of faith and tenacity that you have. You're willing to walk on the water. You're willing to take that risk. And that's why the Lord is saying, man, I'm going to take you into a season of risk because you don't know. You don't know. You think you know, but you don't know the power that you carry. You also don't know the strength of the gifting that you have. Just the innovative, creative gift of the Holy Spirit and the power that even the thing that you work through with your hand carries. Like Paul's shadow, like how people pray over things like the, the bones of Elijah carried the countenance of the kingdom. There are things that you're going to produce with your hands that's going to carry the countenance of the kingdom. Things that you're going to produce, they're going to go across the seas. And people are going to touch them and they're going to feel a hovering over that thing. Because God isn't just making a thing in you. He's producing portals. He's producing little pockets of the Holy Spirit in these things. I've never said this before. Never, ever. I don't even know what it means to create a portal. But whatever it is, God's going to do it through you. And so I just anoint these hands for the creative work, the innovative work of the Holy Spirit. Creativity is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is creativity. That's it. That's it. So I declare greater colors, bolder colors, colors that you have not seen in the natural coming forth from your heart and from your mind, coming out your hands and producing these things where the Holy Spirit just hovers, just little portals of the Holy Spirit. I declare that people will be healed by them, that people will get saved by them, that people will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that people will receive deliverance just because they come in contact with this thing. And I sense even with seriousness, you receive this word and you know, man, I'm going to pray into that. I'm going to pray into those things. I'm going to be praying over my clothes or my earrings. And the Lord says, yeah, whatever, whatsoever you shall pray into, I'll anoint it. That's the authority that the Father has given to you. And so, Father, we just release this word from the top of her head all the way down to the tips of her toes. We loose, God, that Holy Spirit creativity to a greater degree. Really sense even probably even tomorrow. I'm not even say probably tomorrow. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna sense it. You're gonna there's gonna be things that come to your mind, things that you see in your mind. You're gonna be like, where what, what, where did that come from? And God's gonna be like, that's me. That's me. And so, Father, I thank you for that creativity. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You do it now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because you say yes and amen. See, there are people in there and they're like, why her? And I'm like, because she says yes and amen. And the Lord says he can trust you. See, there's a lot of the people in the room that are, have faith, but there are a few that are faithful. But God says you are faithful and I trust you.
And because I've trusted and trusted you and I have seen you be faithful in the small things, I'm about to shift you into the bigger things. I'm about to give you charge over 10 cities. The Lord can trust you, can trust you. And so, Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you for her faithfulness. Not just that she's had faith, but that she's been faithful. Even when times have been tough, when people around you have abandoned you, you have remained faithful. And so I just heal the wounds that people have left. And I remind you that God is still with you. And if God is for you, who can stand against you? That there are more with you than are against you. And though people have left you and they have forsaken you, God has never left you. And so, God, I thank you that she is learning in these times of abandonment that you are her anchor. You are her all in all. And I thank you, Lord, that she's been tenacious, she's been stubborn, and she has decided, I will remain faithful. And I speak this over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. You're welcome. Thank you, Lord. Hi. I've met you before, right? Yes. Okay. Do you go to the Heights the Church? Okay. Do you have anything specific you want me to just pray? I think more as I Okay. And that has been carrying a lot. Okay. So go ahead and close your eyes. I just want you to feel the illumination and the lightness of the Spirit. There it is. And so, Father, you've promised us a quick word tonight. That's not something you're going to have to process through, something you're going to have to think through, something you're going to have to work your way through, but something even right now, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to lift off of you right now. There it is. We're going to touch with you right here, nice and easy. Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Father. Lord, for the girding up that you have caused in her life. I think I just kind of got this picture of the prodigal father when he saw things that he'd been praying for and things that he had been warring for, and he saw it when it was still far off and he ran toward it. There was a tenacity and an unction that the father had. He didn't wait for the thing he had been praying for to come. I'm thinking about um, Simeon in the temple where he saw the work of God while it was still in an infant stage. I don't know how many people were in the temple that day, but they all missed it. Only one man saw it, and it was still in a teeny tiny little infant while it was still way off. God gave him eyes to see, and that's the spirit that God has given to you. You see things that other people don't see. You see the diamonds in the rough. You see the things that other people have missed. You capture the anointings in the room. You see things even while it's still far away. And God honors that. He's given you that eye. And I really feel like the Lord is going to start using that to give you um, a gift of encouragement to go to those people and to meet them where they're at and bring them all the way into their anointing. Bring them all the way into their anointing. I see a real heart of mentorship in you because you see you see the potential of people when other people don't see it when God is still working at an infant sized stage in people's lives you recognize what other people miss now, I don't know if you um, work in a group of people where they don't value what you see or they don't see what you see but I'm going to encourage you with honor and respect to whoever you work with work for with, to be bolder about the things that you see because there are people around you um, who are looking for what you're already seeing you've already found it because while it's still afar off you see it you're girding yourself up and you're going after it and you're going to get it and there's value in that and there are people around you that need that assurance and need that perception and need that wisdom so Father, I thank you for my sister, and I pray, God, I thank you, Lord, that you've already opened her eyes. I want to pray that I would have that I've already done it. I've already given her the eyes to see, and we just pray for the courage to speak, and we pray for the, the, the girding up and the running to, and that you would remember that your greatest strength is your mentorship, to bring people all the way into the greatest of their potential that you see what they don't see. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for this anointing. I pray, Holy Spirit, for the courage, the courage to speak in rooms where people have dismissed you. God's going to cause you to be heard. Even tonight, he's going to cause your voice to penetrate ears that have, have been deaf to your voice. Not because you're speaking it louder, not because you're speaking it more aggressively, but because God is going to open up their ears. I'm reminded in Acts chapter 2, when they begin speaking in new languages, we miss the miracle of hearing. It says that all the people heard in their own language, and that's what's going to happen. You're going to walk into rooms, and when you begin to speak on faith, these are the things that I see and the things that I think you're missing. 
God's going to open up the ears. He's going to loose a gift of hearing in the room. You don't have to force it. God's going to do it. He's going to deliver the message. And so, God, I thank you that your word says that you cause our eyes to see. You cause cause our ears to hear. And you cause our hearts to perceive by the Holy Spirit. And so I loose just a greater anointing of his presence from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. There it is. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Father. You know, do you have I met you before? Okay. I was gonna say sometimes they're like, yes. I'm like, it's hard. Thank you, Lord. Come forward just a little bit. God, I thank you for my sister in Christ. Thank you. Yes, here we go. I thank you for my sister in Christ. I thank you, Father, for um, just bringing her here tonight. I thank you, Father, that she, there, there's a verse in the Bible, I believe it's in Isaiah 62, and it says that you are a royal diadem in the palm of the Lord's hand. And it's the idea of God holding you as if you would hold a crown of royalty in his hand. And I really see, all I could say to anybody in here, like we all have a spirit of royalty on us. God hasn't had me say that to anybody else tonight. But God is saying that to you. That he wants you to be reminded that you are royalty. And that he treats you and he sees you like royalty. And that design in you. And I sense that there's such a confidence in you of knowing who you are in Christ. That there are people who come around and they receive healing just from your confidence. When I talked about the faith of the four friends, there are people who come who are around and they're not sure who they are or where they've been or where they're going, and they just stand next to you. And something about something about you just gives this resonance of royalty, and they begin to feel lifted up. They begin to feel like they're coming into this new level of understanding of who they are, their identity. It's almost like, and I've never said this before, but like if you could have an anointing for releasing God identities in people's lives, you have that anointing. You have that anointing. And so, Father, I thank you that it started with her, that all the years of warring, the devil and the lies that he had put in your head have taught you and have trained you and have caused you to be resilient. And now, not only are you confident, but you're losing the confidence in those around you. And so, Father, I thank you for my sister, and I thank you, Lord, tonight. Tonight, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just bless her, that you would release, Father, this quicker work that you have said you're going to be releasing. God, that you would bring more people to her, and not because of the things she says to them, but just because she is confident. God, that that you would give permission to those around her to be confident as well. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the fire. We thank you for understanding. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for wisdom. And we thank you, Lord, that you cause us to be a portal of your kingdom. You cause us to be a portal of your kingdom. That we don't need to have more things to say. We can just stand and be. And your presence is released. Yeah, there it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what they say, better late than never. Yes. All right, go ahead and close your eyes. Step forward for me just a minute. I'm actually going to put my hands on the side of your head, okay? I don't know why. I just feel like I felt like the Lord told me to do. And maybe he might even give you a hug. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the tenacity of coming, God, of showing up. I thank you for the power of just showing up. And I thank you, Father, that just as she showed up, so you are showing up for her even right now. I thank you, Father, that no matter how much she experiences of you, you continue to allure her and invite her and tell her that there's more. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that though she's gone ankle deep, she's gone knee deep, she's gone waist deep, Father, I thank you, Lord, that there are waves that you want to wash over her. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit from the top of her head all the way down to the tips of her toes. And I thank you, Lord, that she is never too late in the spirit. Never too late in the spirit. Because when she shows up, you show up. And when you show up, she shows up. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that she is determined she's never going to miss out on a thing if it includes you. And so, Father, I thank you that you continue to invite her, you continue to reveal to her. I pray that the Lord would, would open up doors of opportunity for you and that he would give you greater 
the broader doors. I was seeing wider doors. There have been some doors that God has opened and they've been a little bit narrow and you've walked through those and then there was another door and it was a little bit wider and you walk through it. But the more doors God brings you to, the wider and the wider the opportunity is going to be because you take advantage of every opportunity God brings to you. I feel like the Lord says, I honor you because you don't miss a thing. I honor you because you don't miss a thing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I honor you because you don't miss a thing. And so, Father, right now I'm asking the Holy Spirit that you would just remind her in your own special way that you are with her and that you love her. And I just release the courage of the kingdom, the fire of the kingdom, the love of the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. What's happened here? Okay, here we go. Uh, so even as we you know, as, as moms, we take kids into the candy stores and we tell them they have to pick one piece of candy. But I love one piece. I know, right? I all the candy. That's exactly right. And that's, that's what God is offering us in the spirit, right? And so we declare tonight, God, all the candy of the candy store, rushing in, that she's going to get a taste of every single gift. It won't be, I operate in prophecy or I operate in healing because you've asked for all of it. And just as Jesus operated in all the flavors of the candy of the Spirit and of the Kingdom, so I declare tonight that you will begin to feel, you will sense, you will know that I operate in all the gifts of the Kingdom. I don't have to pick one. I don't have to narrow it down to one. I don't care what the gift tests say. God says I operate in all the flavors of the Kingdom. Here it is. Before you say that, I said I want to that's good. Take it. All the flavors of the kingdom. All the flavors of the kingdom. Listen, the world tells us and the church tells us that you have a gift. Jesus didn't have one gift. He had them all. All the flavors of the kingdom. 